So I've got all my images, I've got my JSON file that defines my various social networks. Let's go into our index file. And what we need to have here is, you know, a very basic uh, thing like this. And what we're going to do is uh, a little bit different than before. We're also going to um, reference here uh, jQuery. We're going to use jQuery so that we can write less, do more. So, in our head section, I guess after our title, we need to add a um, script. Well, actually, we need to add it at the end. Um, do it over here. So, before the end of body, let's add script. This is actually JSON practice 3 or so. We need to add a script, and this is going to be a source. This is going to be an online version. I'm going to access code.jquery.com slash jQuery. I forget whatever version I have, but on my notes, 1.4.min.js. So any version of jQuery. I don't think it matters at the moment. It was just for a little bit of uh, using some jQuery if you want to get advanced. don't really need it, but it will be useful. So a simple 10-line document and then a reference over to jQuery. So we can use that inside of our main body. So we've got the heading. We'll, we'll create a simple button. We want something to happen with user input. We don't want this to simply happen. We want the user to click a button to do something. So one quick way to do this is we have a button tag. You can write button slash button. That'll create a simple button. That's all we really need. And Maybe we'll put the text uh, social media. There will be a button. Its text is social media. And in order for our JavaScript to be able to work with this button, it needs an ID. We we'll call it BTN social. So we're building a button on screen that is clickable. And we want some stuff to happen in JavaScript, and then we want to see the social networks appear on screen. So that means we need a placeholder. This time we will use a div. Paragraph could work, but the div uh, has certain basic styling that could work for us. So just a plain old div. This needs also an ID. Um, we'll call it maybe result. So this is giving us a button and a div to show the results. If I run this, remember, let's run this in, uh, in Firefox. Uh, Firefox seems to be a little bit more permissive for us to be able to do this. Let me just check if my code works here so far. Fine. So far, I shouldn't do anything special yet. There's the code so far. And we're going to write some JavaScript to make that button active so that it's clickable. Once it's clicked, then it'll do a It'll then do a bunch of JavaScript, such as load the data from that JSON file and process it somehow. So we will add another script block. This one, we're going to write some inline JavaScript. This again could also be put onto its own separate JavaScript file. Not quite necessary for expediency. And remember. So we've got our JavaScript activated, I mean our jQuery, and then we will write some JavaScript. Uh, the first thing I want to write is, well, let's make that button active. 
So we'll write the, the JavaScript syntax here to be able to, the jQuery syntax here to be able to use this button. So the jQuery selector, dollar parentheses in quotes, then pound uh, btn social. That's like document dot get element by id btn social. It's all just that. Don't forget the pound sign because it's an id. Uh, the method here is that uh, further we're going to say click once we've the method is on and once we've clicked we'll have a callback function. I'm going to make up a, a function called get social. We're going to get a social network. We have nine to choose from, and each one has got all of this data that we could work with. So then on the next line we need to define we need to define what get social does. Just to be sure we're on the right track, I'll make a simple alert. Not too much could go wrong at this point, but we might as well check. So save and run that. Click your button. You should get a pop-up that says works, whatever. And that should confirm that it... Uh, that should confirm that it appears on something appears on screen. We could, we could also do it this way. I did an alert, but then here's another way. Um, maybe we'll write it this way, just for practice also. We've got a div on screen, so we can reference that div with the jQuery selector. We have inner HTML, remember on the other examples, document.getElementById.demo.innerHTML equals, and we wrote some HTML. That was the plain old JavaScript way. With jQuery Mobile, <coughs> that is equivalent because the document.getElementById is all basically this. Then the inner HTML is this, but it's defined this way as a method. Notice the syntax. It's not inner HTML equals. It's HTML method. And inside of there, I write my valid um, HTML. This result should be, if you save it and run it, you click the button and on screen it should display works right below your button. D let's confirm that this works for everyone. If this is not working, double check that your line 11 is linking to jQuery. Because I'm writing here jQuery. If line 11 is not working, you know, if I wrote jQuery, this will not work because I'm not referencing jQuery, and the console will say, I don't know what dollar symbol means. Dollar symbol means something because we've got jQuery. At the very least, we should get some feedback. Did that work for everyone? We'll get feedback here because we've got our, our proper setup with jQuery.
So if I don't use it, Okay, so this should be that at least it works. I'm going to comment that line out, or you can delete it if you want. Double slash there, we'll comment it out. Um, we're going to back up a little bit more right here. In order for all of this to work, we need to try to connect to the file that is in the folder there, full of our JSON data. So right here via via um, JavaScript, we have a way to be able to try to connect to that file. We're, we're basically doing an XML HTTP request. It's a fancy way of saying we're trying to load, we're trying to connect to some reference, some file, some location or something. We're trying to connect somewhere. So what we'll do is we'll type VAR, we're creating a variable, we'll call it XHR because <coughs> equals new XML HTTP now this spelling here is very important uh, request function XML is capital H is capital HTTP the TTP part is not and then request right here we're creating an object of type XML HTTP request. We're trying to set ourselves up to be able to connect to a file, to a location. We're going to connect to that JSON file. So that's being stored as XHR, and then there will have various methods that we can use to read the data, you know, retrieve the data, all of that. So I want to do that right away. I suppose we could do it before our, our button uh, trigger right there, but anywhere. So here we're going to try to our set, set ourselves up to try to retrieve the data. Um, 
we have that XHR. So now what we'll do inside of the Get Social, once the button is clicked, let's try to get the data. If we get the data, we'll do something with it. So make sure you're inside of the Get Social function. That's it. XHR dot on load equals function close parentheses, close braces. This is another way to um, create a function. We've been doing function and then the name of a function. Here we're creating the onload function for XHR in this sort of syntax. So we've got it written like this. I'm going to break up those curly braces into their own lines. Then we'll have inside of the function line 18, a new variable. We'll call it response object. We're going to get. We're going to try to get some response here. Um, so that we can uh, work with this data. JSON, oops, equals JSON dot parse. XHR dot response text. So this is familiar. JSON parse. Uh, we're going to process some data, XHR, up here. Response text. The, the data that we're going to pull out of that file, uh, we're going to process the data here, basically, and store the data in the response object. Now, we haven't said, really, though, w what file are we trying to process? We're trying to open a connection to the file in line 14, sort of. What file? Before we get deeper, I should have done this first, before we get deeper into the social, because this one doesn't quite make sense until we do one more thing. Before we continue inside of the get social function, we've got ending of uh, on load right here to that ending of the whole get social. Give yourself a new line between those two curly braces. After the end of on load function, but before the end of get social function. Be very careful there. This is before the end of um, get social. XHR dot open. Open is a method of the XML HTTP request. We're going to try to open a connection to a file. In quotes, we've got get. This, uh, these are HTTP, what do they call HTTP header requests. I think. So there's get, there's post, what else is there? Get post, read or something. We've got, what's that? Put. Put. Get, po get post and put, right? Uh, so we're going to get, comma. Well, from where? Quotes. What's the name of our JSON file again? Social.json. Social That's the actual file right there comma true. At the moment I forget what that true is about. It's important. So we're trying to make a connection, get the data from the social JSON. And I got xhr.send null. No. That one, I, again, I forget exactly what that one does, but that one just uh, doesn't send data back. I forget what it does, but this is necessary. 
this setup here is this is why we've on the other examples we were simply putting the data in line embedded into one file because we can just use it quickly here look at the setup that we need you know if we had if we had this data that we're getting from elsewhere we have to do all of this this is basic here of what we need to do to retrieve data from elsewhere in short then this should uh, this should um, this should open up a connection to the to the JSON file, basically. What I want to do first to see if this is working well, just display all of that data on screen in some sort of usable way. So we're trying to open that connection and what we'll do is we will try to display on screen um, that data. So now we'll go back to the onload inside the onload function. Uh, create another variable, call this str equals blank. We're creating a, we're going to build a string. I believe we've done a variation of this before. We're, we're going to we're going to build a variable and we're going to build it sort of like line by line of code to then display it on screen. What we need to do is we've got nine social networks to display on screen. And so that means we need to loop nine times and show all of that data on screen. So this st humble string here will be a building block to allow us to do that. Next line, we'll do for, F-O-R, open close parentheses, open close curly braces. Break those curly braces onto a couple of lines. This is going to be a for loop. Uh, this will allow us to, multiply, uh, to iterate to do things over and over for some amount of time, uh, some, amount, some amount of steps. So the syntax for this. I think we've done it at least once. var i equals uh, 0. Start from the 0th item. We're going to have 9 items in our JSON file. We want to start with the 0th one semicolon. The for statement is one of the only uh, JavaScript uh, bits of code where we're going to have a terminator in the middle of the statement. We're not really done here yet. We're starting from the zero with item and we want to go all the way up to the last item. So we will say i less than 9. Now, actually, that would work if we will only always have 9 networks. What if we further than later on at seven more networks. So now we have up to go we have to go back to our code and change that to 15 to do you know 16 networks. So we have better way to do this. We have the length property of the of the data to keep us constrained with what we can display. So we'll have response object. Basically all of our JSON data is right here. Remember we've parsed it. Give me the data that we're trying to get, parse it as, as an object, put it in here. So we can reference here to say dot, we called it, let me confirm here, we called it social network, right? Yep, social network. Response. Um, dot social network dot length that length property that will return well there's nine objects there's seven objects there's twelve objects there's forty objects there's a thousand objects I don't need to know how many there are this is a way for us to be constrained between the first item and whatever the last one is semicolon. Well, we want to start with the f with the zero with one, and then we want to go to the next one, which is one. Then we want to go to the next one, which is two. On and on and on. So that's I plus plus. And plus plus will just increment the value starting with zero. 
because the zeroth thing in our data is YouTube, then one is Vine. Yeah, first is YouTube, then Vine, then Twitter, then Google+, etc. I want to jump through all of them. That's what this for loop is about. So in the for loop, what we will add, uh, on that one, no, don't think so. So in the for loop, we're going to jump, I'm going to say str, this time plus equals, very careful here, this is a plus equals. When I wrote that equals, it's take the thing on the right, put into the thing on the left. Actually, take the thing on the right and dump whatever on the left and put it into it. So empty it and put what's in the here. So in here, we're going to add to it. Whatever's already in that string, add something more. We're going to row by row show every social network we have. We're going to make new divs for every social network to display them all on screen. So in quotes here, we'll start our div tag. Colon, okay, two spaces here, I'll explain why in a moment, plus equals, close the div tag, slash div, it should, it should see them both, It's going to create a div to show one network, and then the next one, and then the next one, on and on. <coughs> now we'll back up in the middle here, string plus equals. Um, we need to display, let's start off by displaying uh, in, uh, the, the image of the social network. Let's say we'll have the image, uh, then the the name of the social network below it. So in order for us to display an image, we would need the image tag. Remember the image tag does not have a pair, but it has a source. That is where it's going to get tricky but fun, I think. Um, we have to use semi. We have to use single quotes here, of course, because we've got double quotes on the outside. And what's going to appear here in the middle is the particular network on the zeroth position. So response obj dot social network brackets i dot called it image, right? We have image. I want to display Okay, I've got I here. Previously, when we used this syntax, we wrote a number there, 0, 2, 7, whatever. Well, we've got nine possible numbers. Pick 0, 1, up to 0, 9. So we're borrowing the I that we've defined right here. Um, to display the, the social network. Now, uh, this is the concept, but this will not work. This is the concept. But it will not work because this is all inside of my string, isn't it? It will literally display that. It won't display the image. So we have to get tricky here. We have to dynamically 
update that that value. So watch me first, because this is tricky, and then we'll do it. I'm going to close the quote there, plus, plus, quote. Because I've written valid HTML here, plus, okay, now show the picture, and then plus end and the image tag. Let me back that up. Here it is before I, my fix. This wouldn't work because it's just a string. So this is the valid HTML. Go to right before the start of response object. And close that quote because that quote now is closing here. Was that quote space plus? So it's going to be write this little bit of code, start to fill in our source. Our source is going to be defined with this. Then we need to finish this because now that's gibberish. So after image plus space quote. So now that quote closes the rest of the valid HTML, the single quote that was defining our source. And then the double quote, which is the angle bracket. What's that? Oh, yes, yes, then we need to display it, yes. Okay, so we're building this string, and then we need to actually display it. That's what we're missing here. Uh, we're building this up, and then we need to display it on screen. That's going to be, then... Um, that um, remember we've got our result here so we should be able to do that uh, in the for loop we've got the result that we're going to use. Remember, that's our div, our temporary div, HTML file. Uh, I mean, HTML, writing HTML, and then string. Not in quotes because the um, because the uh, I want to display what's in the string. If it was in quotes, it would just be str. Okay, let's try that. Save it and run it. Click the button, and then it should display all social network pictures. What's that? Possibly. Let's let me check. It worked. But let me put it out there just to confirm. I don't think that that one will work because, well, it still seems to work. But see, being, being in, yeah. yeah. Just like, like, replace the result. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, re it's replacing itself every time in the for loop. And even though it does display it, it displays the last version of it. But I suppose here it's using a lot of processing power. So good eye there. Okay, here would be a better way. Uh, add the result output after the for loop because during the for loop it's just going to keep building it over and over and over and over and over 
nine times, and then the last version shows up. So instead of it using up that CPU power, we'll put it right after the fourth, show the final version of us building the string. Same result, but better resource management. Let's see, so the result should be you click, and it'll diligently go through and show all your pictures because we're building a brand new div showing a brand new version of the of the image on screen. Now, um, we're getting close to the end of the day, but let me finish the, the thought about showing the other pieces of data, then we'll, then we'll do a little lab time. Um, when I'll put my version of the code there in a moment, and then uh, next time, remember I said, okay, here's a way to display all the data. I want to then have it display random uh, social networks and do other cool things. Let's just do one more thing here. I wanted to display the network and its its name. So as I build the string here, I'm displaying then the social network's image. Something very similar I will use to then display the uh, the name. So I'm going to back up to line 23, which is after my my image and I could do a little copy and paste or I can um, keep it as is here but I'll, I'll do it the long way so string plus equals again add a little bit more I've, I've added the picture I'm gonna add a little bit more uh, this is gonna be the the text below it, so I think we maybe should add a break here just in case. So we'll do break plus, because I wanted to process a break, then I wanted to process response, object, social network, I, because we're looping through the sequence, dot, we called it, not desk, we call it name, that was our name field in our JSON file, and uh, we'll check about formatting in a moment, I think that's all we need there. Yeah. <coughs> So now what it's doing is it's displaying every name of the social network. It's displaying the picture and the name. We've got a description. Maybe I wanted to say the name of the network dash the description that we, that we wrote. So on the next line, string plus equals. Here then we will do, so we're keeping it on the same line, so we'll do space dash and plus, and this time I will copy and paste, and now we're displaying desk. Description. We still have a URL that we could work with. Uh, let's hold off on that one for, for, for the moment. It's going to be the same sort of concept that we've been doing here, but we're going to need to craft some more HTML because remember the, the, the HTML for making a link is, is the A tag. The A tag then needs href, but the A tag needs to be wrapped around some elements. I want to make it perhaps that I wrap it around the picture and or the text. So we will get to it, but I, I'll say for the moment, if it's working at this point, the result should be that if you run it in Firefox, you click the button, all of the networks will just stack up on themselves. Of course, the formatting and alignment and all of that stuff, it doesn't know that we want that. It's done. We haven't programmed it to do that. So we'll need to deal with that a little later. 
but it's retrieving the data that I'm pulling out of the JSON file. We've built this JSON file, which is just a list of data. It's a database, basic flat database, a name field, image field, description field, URL fields. In my JavaScript, I'm connecting to that file, pulling all that data in and basically storing it in response object. I parsed it. It's an object. I can work with it. And then using the data, not in a super complex way here, but I'm making a loop to go over and over through however many networks I have and display the picture, display its name, display its description. Raise your hand if this worked. Okay, two out of 30. Great. Good job. Okay, we'll do help in just a moment. So if it, if it worked, uh, very good. If not, I'm going to put my code in the folder in just a moment, and then I'll help people. Uh, we'll end at this point when we come back. We're still going to work with this a little bit more next time. Um, but we're on track here, hopefully, to this making a bit of sense. So um, we're going to wrap up at this point and have some lab time.